morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night, depending on where you are right now. It is the Desert Viking, and we are on week 20. It is morning here in the desert, and I am having my coffee. Today's discussion is a little bit about wiping the slate clean before you can try to rebuild again. Sometimes the destination you're trying to get to isn't to rebuild yourself, but rather to tear down the things that need to be tore down before you can rebuild. So this week, week 20, uh, I would say the resounding keyword that I've had to deal with is resentment. This is a, an emotion I've been grappling with. Well, if you've been watching since the beginning, you know I've been, re I've been grappling with this the entire time. Um, this, is, this has been the, the paramount piece that I've been dealing with. Resentment. And back in week 12, when I transitioned eras, as it were, I said that the biggest challenge of this era would be to not be bitter and to overcome that resentment. And I knew that that was going to be an issue because this isn't my first rodeo in this in this uh, environment. This isn't my first time. Uh, and I don't know that people can fully heal from betrayal. I think that we like to say we do because we want to put it behind us. But I don't know that most people have that ability to fully move on from betrayal, let alone multiple betrayals. They stack up. And when you heal, it leaves a scar behind. And the more, obviously, the more events you, you have to heal, the more scars you'll have left behind. And that resentment can start to build. And uh, that is what I, I am working to overcome. Resentment of what happened. Resentment of the culture I live in. Resentment that the worst among us are given the best things. It seems backwards. It seems illogical. But when you peel all the layers back, it's very primal. Because we are nothing more than animals. We are nothing more than primitive animals that are basing our lives off of primitive instincts. Regardless of how intelligent we want to be. And so you have to... I try to... I try. And again, these, these are video logs... To document my movement through this whole ordeal. So I want to be as real as possible. And not omit things. Because of, of the light that I might get put in later. When people look at it and go, oh. Um, but, you know, as intelligent as we want to be. We're, we're still very primal beings that do primal things. And use our lizard brains to, to get rewards. We do the same things that rats do in, in experiments in a lot of cases. If you study psychology, there's a number of studies. Um, one of my favorite studies is the Rat City from the 70s, uh, where they have the rats have everything that they want, and yet the society blows up all the time. Because the rats have everything that they want, they just go haywire. And I, and I see that. I see a lot of those similarities in our culture. We just go haywire. So, um, I have to get over the resentment that I feel towards what happened, towards that they get rewarded for it, towards towards a lot of things. That's That's that bitterness. That's that who hurt you, right? Who hurt you? But, I don't feel shame that I was hurt because I, I didn't, you know, it's not like I, I chose to do that. This, it, you're, you're dealt the hand, now you have to react to it. So last night, I traveled to another lodge. Our lodge went to another lodge. That we like to visit other lodges. And then we had, uh, we had a lecturer in... And the lecture itself really had nothing to do with 
my situation or what I was going through, but being inside of that lodge, this was an open lodge now. Uh, this, sorry, this was an open event, meaning it was, it was meant for both the initiated and the ones who were seeking to be initiated, the seekers, which is what I am. Seeking the light. But in that moment, sitting in that lodge, uh, surrounded by people I didn't know, I was putting myself into another socially awkward situation, which was good. It ended up being a great, a, a great time. Uh, looking around that room, the connections start to make themselves clearer. I can be resentful. In fact, I would say that anyone in the situation that I'm in would be resentful. I can truthfully say that going forward, my ability to trust people, well, I, I've never really had the great ability to trust people. I've, people have shown me who they are many times in my life. Uh, and I think that's just common knowledge. Like, There's nothing special about knowing that you have to be careful who you trust. But um, knowing that for the common person, relationships are transactional, you have, to go in, you have to go into it knowing that, knowing that if this person's expressing interest in you, there's something that they want. And once you can't deliver on what that is, they, because they have, they have the magic device, We've talked about the magic device with all the guys in here that want their attention. They can just hop to the next one. But that is just the way our current society works. And I can be resentful of that. But being resentful of that doesn't change anything. It's not going to make it not be that. I have no control over it. I only have control over what I have control over. And so I watched the dots get connected last night more. And it, maybe it's just being around other people of like mind. Maybe it's being in the environment of being inside the lodge with the symbology everywhere and, and that feeling. It's kind of like going into a church. Um, you just have that feeling, that presence makes you think. That the suffering, the pain, the hardship that I'm enduring right now was meant to be. I am exactly where I am supposed to be. I'm exactly in the position that I am supposed to be in. And lately, I've been getting closer to the Creator. And I intentionally don't use religion on this channel because, uh, number one, religion divides people. I th I've known that before even... I sought the light, as you know, as it were, with Freemasonry. Uh, I was b removed from my family because of I didn't agree with their religion at an early age. As 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 an eighteen year old young man, I have seen what religion can do in terms of dividing people. So I don't discuss specific religions here. I leave my specific religion or specific spirituality out of it. But I can say that what I believe is that the truth, the actual truth, is far too large for any one man or woman to really comprehend, being that we are just humans, and that the truth has been spread around the world, the globe, as perspectives and that each of those perspectives is as true as another. And so I've been, oh, I have spent my life trying to find those perspectives to see things through the other, through the other side. And uh, I have been, over the past few weeks, getting closer to the Creator. Whatever that is to you. Um, that voice, there's a voice that you can hear and it says you are where you're supposed to be this is the moment you are supposed to be in and some people will go well that's messed up 
something that loves you or, or whatever puts you through pain and suffering. That just sounds horrible and messed up. But I'd like you to consider a few things. Number one, suffering is where we grow. Without suffering, there is no growth. Without pain, there is no growth. Without pain, there is often very little inner self-reflection, which are, to me, vital. Number two, consider an allegory that I came up with. Maybe I've read it somewhere and I, I think I came up with it, but maybe I'm not. Maybe I didn't come up with it. I don't know. But it popped in my head and I wanted to share it about suffering. Consider a block of marble. The block of marble is transformed into a wonderful piece of statuary by a skilled sculptor. Right? And every time that sculptor has to bring down the chisel with the hammer to chisel out another detail of that statue. That block of marble is going through stress. It is suffering. It is changing into something far better, but at the cost of temporary pain and suffering. And that's kind of what I see myself as right now. Who I am and who I was has to be tore down completely before we can rebuild anything. As I've been going through the physical pillars, the intellectual pillars, and the spiritual pillars, I have been in the process of closing doors that no longer need to be open and welding them shut. I have been in the process of tearing down stone by stone, brick by brick, plank by plank, every piece that made me who I was. Because I am here where I am right now because I'm supposed to be. This is what I should be doing. Sometimes to build up, you have to tear down first. You have to clear the palette before you can build a proper foundation. And that's what I've been doing. And the resentment and the anger and the disgust that I have felt over the past however many weeks is normal, it's natural, but ultimately inconsequential. Because I have no control over any of those things. I was put into this situation intentionally, I was brought to here, the desert, for a purpose, and that purpose wasn't what I thought it was, but I am exactly where I need to be right now. And so if you're going through something similar, know that you are where you need to be right now, and know that to sculpt a better you, you have to go through a lot of pain. That pain takes many forms. That pain is waking up every morning and heading out into the gym or whatever you use for a gym and lifting heavy things. That thing can be lacing up your shoes and going for a long run. That thing can be sitting through college. The tedium of the time spent in college to better your mind. That thing can be self-reflection through a great pain. But all of those things, all of those forms of suffering lead to a better place, lead to what you are supposed to be, and changes your entire vibration. And by changing your entire vibration, you will pull in things that will be good for you and not the things that put you in these places that I am in right now. And changing your vibration is no small, fe uh, small feat, but that is what I've been doing. So that's my week 20. If you have any comments, love to hear them. Otherwise, thanks for tuning in, paying attention. Uh, until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.